وسلم Anyone who recites 1,000 times durood upon me every day, he will not die until he sees his place in Jannah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reviewers of Madhi channel, this is the second episode of the Zilsla in the light of Quran. We were discussing about the istiqama, how one can get steadfastness on hidayat. And in answer to that question, Mufti sahab told us that there are many ways and one of them is learning knowledge and after knowledge it is also necessary that we must be in good company in the company of those people who are pious and practicing muslim it is also very necessary that we must avoid the company of corrupt people and bad people and mufti sahab further elaborated that it is also very essential for us to have bayat on the hands of a person who is really Sheikh Kamil. And then at the end, Mufti Sahib told us that Dua is also one of those means by which we can attain istiqamat, steadfastness on Hidayah. So may Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the Hidayat. Malana Rum Rahmatullahi ta'ala le, a famous Muslim saint, he says that to sit in the company of a pious person even for a single moment is better than 100 years worshipping full of sincerity. So what is special in the sobat of these kind of people that Maulana Rum Rahmatullahi Ta'ala is saying that sitting in their company for a moment is better than 100 years ibadat which is done with full sincerity. Then when we see the biographies of different awliya kiram and ulama kiram, so we come to know that every one of them had been sitting in company of that person who was practicing and pious, for example, Allah Hazrat. So Allah Hazrat was disciple of Al Rasul Rahmatullahi Ta'ala and then he was also ordered to sit in the company of Abul Hussain Nuri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. Amir Sunnat Damad Barakatumul Aliya. He enjoyed the wonderful company of many pious ulama kiram and awliya kiram. So it means that whenever istikamat will be mentioned and hidayat will be mentioned, the, the, the people of piety and practicing Muslim, practicing Muslim, they will also be mentioned. So Musab, here my question is that what is special in these true practicing bondsmen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? that hidayat and istikamat is always found in their company and almost everywhere they are mentioned for attaining hidayat and istikamat. Basically there are two things. One is book of Allah which Allah has revealed over the Holy Prophet and second is special bondmen of Allah, special people of Allah. In Quran Allah has mentioned the importance of both importance of the book of Allah as in many places Allah has described the excellences of the Holy Quran what kind of excellence the Quran has as so they are hundreds of ayat which are about the excellence and importance of the Holy Quran but on the other hand, there are many ayat about those people, those special bondmen of Allah Azza wa Jal as well, which were special people of Allah Azza wa Jal. As in how many places Allah Azza wa Jal had described the excellences of pious people, as Wa'ibadul Rahman illadina yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna wa idha khatabahum al-jahiluna qalu salama. Even in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the, uh, second, uh, uh, the second surah of the Holy Quran, in beginning, Wherever Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned about Quran, Dalikal Kitabul La Riba Fi, that is about Quran. But after that, Hudalil Muttaqin, 
Now, what is the definition of muttaqin and what is what are the qualities of muttaqin? Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned in the same place. Alladina yuminuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salat wa mimma radaqanahum yunfikun. So it means in the beginning of Quran, where Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned the excellence and the importance of Quran. In the same place, Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned the excellence and the qualities of wise people as well. So it it shows that. the book of allah and the people of allah the special monument of allah both are very important and both are necessary for getting guidance that's why in many places wherever allah azza wa jalla has demanded from us to follow the commandments of allah azza wa jalla and to be obedient of to allah azza wa jalla allah azza wa jalla has commanded us to follow the path of his pious people as in one place in same surah al fatiha Allah Azza wa Jal is describing O people you should say Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhi O Allah keep us on the right path the path of Allah the path of those people whom you have favored so though that word could be mentioned in this place that the path of Allah O Allah keep us on the right path the path which is your path but Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning this place ihdina sirat al mustaqim sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim oh Allah keep us on the right path the path of those people whom you have favored so these favored people are beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal that's why Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us to follow the path of these people the first thing the second in one place Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin oh believers have fear of Allah and then be stay with those people who are truthful wa kunu ma'as sadiqin now the very basic commandment of islam has been given in beginning ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah o believers have fear of allah adopt piety but after that allah azza wa jalla has mentioned the method of getting that piety to attaining and to acquiring that piety allah azza wa jalla has told us the path of those the method of those and what is that kunu ma'as sadiqin have the company of pious people be with them stay with them stay in the company of those people you will get that piety which has been already commanded in the beginning of the ayah so that that shows the importance of rijalullah the people of allah the special monument of allah azza wa jalla then in one uh, another place allah azza wa jalla has said ulai kal ladina hadallahu fa bi hudahu muqtadi allah azza wa jalla had described many uh, prophets many uh, uh, anbiya kiram alayhim as-salatu wassalam then allah azza wa jalla commanded ulai kal ladina hadallah these are the these are the ones whom allah azza wa jalla has guided now then allah azza wa jalla is saying fa bi hudahu muqtadi so their guidance you should follow as well you you should follow the guidance of these people so that is another and the word hidayah is being mentioned in this place as we are discussing about hidayah how can we get istikamat over hidayah how can we get guidance how can we get hidayah so now allah azza wa jalla is mentioning the method of acquiring that ulaika alladhina hadallah fa bi hudahu muqtadi if you have to get guidance if you have to get hidayah so then follow the path of those people who have who are already guided people whom allah azza wa jalla has guided already so that is another ayah which shows the excellence and importance of pious people and the favored people then there is another ayah allah azza wa jalla uh, mentioned in the holy quran what tabi' sabila man anaba ilayya follow the path of those people who turn towards me who are muni bi who return to allah azza wa jal with repent and in humbleness and with the submission of allah azza wa jal so follow the path of those people so these ayah these ayah are describing the importance of the special monument of allah azza wa jal and even when a pious person departs from this world that time angels are allah azza wa jal address address that person and that time what is said Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in the Holy Quran ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna o satisfied soul whose soul was satisfied whose self was satisfied who were the pious person who has got the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla in this world to that soul to that self it has been addressed irji'i ila rabbik turn towards your lord in which condition radiyatan mardiyah you are pleased with allah and allah is pleased with you then 
فد خلی فی عبادی ود خلی جنتی دین اینٹر امنگ مائی اسپیشل بانڈ مین ود خلی جنتی این اینٹر ان ٹو مائی پیراڈائز سو نو اللہ عز و جل از گونگ گلیڈ ٹائڈنگ ٹو دیٹ سیٹسفائڈ سول ٹو دیٹ پائز پرسن اینڈ ان دیٹ پلیس اللہ عز و جل از ڈسکرائبنگ از مینشننگ ہز اسپیشل بانڈ مین فرسٹ دین اینٹرنگ ان ٹو پیراڈائز فد خلی فی عبادی ود خلی جنتی یو اینٹر امنگ مائی پائز پیپل مائی ورچوس پیپل اینڈ دین اینٹر ان ٹو مائی پیراڈائز سو اٹ شوز وین انشاء اللہ ود دا بلیسنگ آف اللہ عزوجل وین وی ول اینٹر ان ٹو پیراڈائز دیٹ ٹائم فرسٹ وی ول اینٹر ان ٹو دا گروپ آف پائز پیپل ان ٹو دا گروپ آف اسپیشل بانڈ مین آف اللہ عزوجل دین وی ول اینٹر ان ٹو پیراڈائز انشاء اللہ عزوجل ود دا بلیسنگ آف اللہ عزوجل تو اٹ مینس ایٹ دا لاسٹ مومنٹ آف دا لائف وین دا پرسن از ڈپارٹنگ فرام دس ورلڈ اینڈ اللہ عزوجل اور ہز اینجلس آر ایڈریسنگ ہم دیٹ ٹائم دیٹ پرسن از بینگ ایڈریس ان دیٹ وے دین There is supplication of Hadrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam in the Holy Quran. He invoked in the court of Allah. Fatira samawati wal ard. O creator of the heavens and earth. Anta wali yi fi dunya wal akhira. You are my, you are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Now he is, he is invoking. Tawaffani muslimam wa alhiqni bi salihin. cause me to die as a muslim and then join me with righteous people hazrat yusuf alaihi salatu wasalam who is the prophet of allah azza wa jal who was rasul and who was one of the most beloved born men of allah azza wa jal he is supplicating in the court of allah azza wa jal these words tawaffani muslima wa alhiqni bi salihin cause me to die as a muslim and then join me with righteous people with pious people so that shows the importance of rijalullah the word what i have used in in beginning the one is kitabullah and the other is rijalullah if someone says that i will follow only kitabullah and i will never follow rijalullah the people of allah so then he will he will lose his way and he will become one of deviant people subhanallah very wonderful explanation dear viewers of madhvi channel that one is kitabullah and other is rijalullah so guidance can be found in kitabullah and can also be found in rijalullah then the ultimate goal of quran is hidayat because it is said that hudal lil muttaqin therein is hidayat and guidance in this book of allah for those who are muttaqin fearful of allah so when quran is hidayat and the ultimate goal is to attain hidayat then there comes a question that how can we attain hidayat let's move to mufti sahab and ask him what is the best way of attaining hidayat or guidance yeah really when uh, guidance and hidayat is very important and we are in the need of getting that or to be steadfast on that so that's why we need to learn about the methods of that so there are three ways there are three ways there are many ways but i would mention only three the first method is to invoke in the code of allah subhanahu because he is a real guide he is the one who guide all the people as allah azza wa jalla mentioned ulaika alladhina hadallah these are the people whom allah has guided so means allah azza wa jalla is real guide so that's why when guidance is in the hand of allah azza wa jalla so we should invoke in his court and there are many uh, ayat and there are many uh, uh, supplications which have been mentioned in quran and hadith so if we make reciting those uh, supplications as our habit as our routine so inshallah that would be very beneficial for us as in the very same aya what we are discussing about in that aya allah azza wa jalla is telling us you should invoke in the code of allah azza wa jal with these words ihdina sirat al mustaqim sirat al ladina anamta alayhim so it means for getting guidance allah azza wa jal has told us one supplication and because of this supplication the name of this surah is surah to ta'lim al mas'ala this surah is about teaching us how to supplicate in the code of allah azza wa jal so that is very beneficial way to get guidance and to be steadfast over straight path that is one supplication 
with these words ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladina anamta alaihim ghairil maghdubi alaihim walad dalin so if we recite this supplication after for example after every prayer daily daily after every prayer so that would be that would be one of our routine supplications so that is one that is one supplication the other supplication is allah azza wa jal describe that supplication in another place with these words rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab rabbana la tuzigh qulubana o our lord let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us ba'da idh hadaytana after you have guided us let not our hearts deviate from your path wa hab lana min ladunka rahma and grant us your mercy from yourself o innaka antal wahhab and you are the best over so if this supplication we add in our daily routine we include in our daily routine so that would be very useful supplication for getting guidance and for getting steadfastness over straight path then the third uh, supplication which he, which has been mentioned in one hadith allah mustabid qalbi ala deen o allah grant steadfastness to my heart over your straight path over your religion so that is another that is another supplication so these are three uh, supplication two are from quran and one is from hadith so invoking in the court of allah azza wa jalla for getting istiqamah for getting guidance it is very beneficial way the second the second method of getting steadfastness and getting guidance is to learn islamic knowledge to learn islamic knowledge as learning quran learning hadith reading the books of uh, salaf salihin reading the books of uh, pious predecessors so that is also very important but there is problem in this place in this method there is a problem what is that because as we know there are many sects in islam and mu'tazila and murjia and qadriya and jabriya so there were many sects in islam and still they uh, many of them still they are existing so that's why now it is very important to read sound content and really good books and really guided books which which can teach us right islamic beliefs not the wrong ones as there are many books in tafsir there are many books of uh, books in uh, in shuru of hadith there are many books in tasawwuf there are many books in fiqh which have been written by mu'tazila and by other deviant people so that's why that is very important to choose the right books otherwise really might be these books would be the means of our misguidedness so for that purpose in this era in this age i would recommend the books of ala hazrat imam ahl sunnat mujaddidin millat asha imam ahmad rida khan ali rahmatul rahman and the books of the disciples of ala hazrat the books of the followers of ala hazrat if we restrict ourselves within these books so inshallah we will get sound knowledge and we will get proper islamic commandments islamic teachings and inshallah then we can protect ourselves from misguidedness and from the wrong path and then alhamdulillah now as the publishing department of dawat islami al madinatul ilmiya and maktabat al madina they have published many books hundreds of books, more than many hundreds so when those books are available al alhamdulillah most of the islamic knowledge are available in in those books which are basic necessary knowledge for us so that is available in these books so that's why if we read the books of amir al sunna and the books of al madinah al ilmiya so inshallah in that way we will get sound knowledge and through that knowledge we can get guidance and we can get steadfastness as well then the third method to get steadfastness is getting the company of good people getting the company of pious people and for that purpose i would recommend the environment of dawat e islami as alhamdulillah we have observed with our own eyes that in the environment of dawat e islami how many people whether they were deviant or they were disobedient to allah azza wa jal but alhamdulillah with the blessings of dawat e islami and after sitting in the company of dawat e islami after attending the congregations of dawat e islami or after telling in the madrin kafras of dawat e islami or after watching madrin channel alhamdulillah they have diverted themselves from that life to a right life so that is another good method for getting steadfastness and for getting guidance so first of all we should adopt supplication the second we should uh, learn 
proper Islamic knowledge and third we should sit in the company of pious and good people and right people. So inshallah these were the means of getting guidance and being steadfast not for that. The viewers of Madhi channel, the initial four or five verses of Surah Bakara, they are also giving us a message and that is that Quran is Hidayat for Muttaqeen, Hudal Lil Muttaqeen. When we say Muttaqeen, so what we mean by Muttaqeen? What is the definition of Muttaqi? In light of these verses of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqeemuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon wa alladheena yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik wa bil akhiratihum yuqeenoon. So there are few things mentioned like uh, they believe in unseen, uh, they, they establish their prayer, summary of the verse, and then they spend from that sustenance which has been granted to them. Then they believe on that revelation which has been sent down to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And they also believe in those prophets and their revelations which came before the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And they are very certain. They have faith in hereafter as well. So these are few qualities of muttaqeen. So my question to Mufti Sahib is going to be that what is the real definition of Muttaqi? Because unless we know that what is the real definition of Muttaqi, we won't be able to become Muttaqi. So Musa, what is the definition of Muttaqi? When we discuss any particular word, so then there are three things. The one thing is the literal meaning. The second is terminology, the actual definition in, in, in that field, in that particular science and the third which is called technical meaning as well and the third thing to describe something with those qualities which can tell us the actual character of that particular uh, that particular attribute what is that and what are those qualities so the literal meaning of word taqwa the basically word muttaqin is from taqwa and the word taqwa is in the meaning of to protect ourselves from something which is harmful. To protect ourselves from harmful thing. Now when we take that word uh, in our religious terminologies, so then the meaning is, is that to protect ourselves from those things which are harmful for us in hereafter. So the, those things are sins. So it means to protect ourselves from major sins and minor sins. That is the meaning of taqwa. That is the basic meaning of taqwa and that is the meaning of that taqwa which is wajib upon us or which is farz upon us. So that is the technical meaning and that is the definition of taqwa. Then the third thing, what you have mentioned that in this place Allah Azza wa Jal describes first al-muttaqin. Quran is hidayat for muttaqin. Quran is guidance for muttaqin. Then Allah Azza wa Jal describes some attributes of muttaqin. What are those? Alladina yu'miluna bil ghaib. Who believe in unseen, in unseen things. Including Allah Azza wa Jal and paradise and hell and the day of judgment and angels. And then the other quality, the other attribute is sarah. They establish prayer. Then the third quality, They spend in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has granted them. Then they believe in previous books and they believe in Quran as well. Then they are sure about Akhirat. They have faith in Akhirat. These are the qualities of Muttaqeen. So basically as I have mentioned the actual meaning, the definition of taqwa that is protection ourselves from those things which are harmful for us. So now if we look at these qualities which have been mentioned in this place, Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaib, that is iman. So having belief in unseen things means adopting all the beliefs of Islam that will protect us from the hellfire. Then wa yuqimuna salah to establish prayer. So the third way of uh, defining something is to mention the qualities of that thing as muttaqi and muttaqin. That has been mentioned in Quran with some attributes and with some qualities. As in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal has defined muttaqin with these qualities. هُدَلْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Till end. 
so these are qualities of pious people means they believe in unseen thing they establish prayer they spend in the path of allah azawajal they believe in previous books as well as in quran and they are certain about akhira about the day of judgment now in another place allah azawajal has described some other qualities of muttaqin and in one place in surah surah ali imran allah azawajal has described uiddat lil muttaqin paradise has been prepared for muttaqin and who are muttaqin what are the qualities of muttaqin allah azza wa jalla describe alladhina yunfiquna fi sarra'i wad darra'i wal kaazimin al ghaida wal aafina 'anil nas wallahu yuhibbu al muhsinin wal ladhina idha fa'alu fahishatan aw zalamu anfusahum dhakarullaha fastaghfiru li dhunubihim wa may yaghfir al dhunuba illa allah wa lam yusirru 'ala ma fa'alu wa hum ya'lamun these are the qualities of muttaqin pious people what are these qualities alladhina yunfiquna fi sarra'i wa dhallah they spend their wealth in the path of allah whether they are in the state of adversity or they are in the state of uh, prosperity then wal kaazimin al ghaib they express their anger wal aafina 'anil nas and they forgive other people then the other quality if uh, because of the deception of shaitan and because of the whisper of shaitan if they commit any sin they remember allah azza wa jal and they repent of that those sins and they never persist they never persist on their sins so these are other qualities of muttaqin so basically that is the method of quran to give the definition of something quran doesn't deal with the uh, with the deep definition of something quran describes thing with the attributes and with qualities so similarly in this place allah azza wa jal has described muttaqin with their qualities so it means these are the qualities of muttaqin and through that in in these qualities we can see the meaning of taqwa as well because we have mentioned the meaning of taqwa to protect ourselves from those things which are harmful in in after life so these things believing in unseen establishing prayer spending in the path of allah and uh, for giving other people and uh, express our anger and spending in the path of allah uh, in prosperity and in uh, adversity so these are those qualities which can protect a person from hell fire and which can protect a person from harmful things in akhirah so that is the definition of quran regarding muttaqin and regarding taqwa so uh, to sum up i would say if we take the little meaning of taqwa that would be only protection ourselves from harmful things if we take the uh, if we take the uh, technical meaning of taqwa that is to protect ourselves from those things which are harmful for our after life and if we take the definition of quran so in uh, in different ayah the qualities of muttaqin have been mentioned in different ways so that is the actual uh, that is the actual definition of taqwa the viewers of madni channel you must have learnt a lot especially from the explanation which mufti sahab granted us regarding muttaqin and then the definition of taqwa in nutshell taqwa is to safeguard ourselves against all those actions and things which are going to prove harmful for us in hereafter may allah subhanahu wa taala make all of us really muttaqi muslim and grant us tawfeeq to become practicing and obedient slaves of him amin bijahin nabil amin sallu alal habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam quran